oui, j'ai le plus beau métier du monde. Yes, I have the most beautiful job in the world. I am a school directress. So far, all is well. A woman school director. For the first time, as my son said, I can explain what you do in the classroom. But uh, the uh, director of a grande école, well, a grande école in France is something which is far more complicated because it uh, uh, makes people think about an elite selection, excellence elite. Well, it's fine if it's the people uh, who you choose, but not people who choose themselves. And you, you need to choose the best, not just the children or grandchildren of the best people in the past. That's the issue about the grandes écoles in France. Lena, uh, this applies to it too, maybe more than other grandes écoles, because we are uh, trained to serve the state. And we take decisions, hold a lot of responsibility. And that affects every other citizen in the world. So a grande école is uh, actually a small structure. We work with small numbers of people. But what is specific is that we have 60 million shareholders. There isn't a single French person who uh, does not have an idea about what should be done in the ENA, including uh, uh, the president of the republic, who might like to do away with the school. We're at a phase in our history when some people say we need less training. I think we need more. The better uh, trained you are, uh, the better you get on in life. It's much better to keep schools open than to close them. There are 60 million different ways of viewing us. One day I met someone and I thought, well, he does uh, sort of the same thing as I do in life, Didier Deschamps. Every time there is a, a match uh, played by the uh, French soccer team, people say, oh, he shouldn't have uh, trained them that way, he shouldn't have selected the team in that way, but he's not the person, Didier Deschamps, the, the coach, the trainer who's actually playing on the field. 60 million shareholders, well, that's uh, great. In the École Nationale d'Administration, you have the word national. The school belongs to the nation. That means two things for me. I joined it without ever having left it, really. I didn't actually do the ENA, but I'm trying to uh, uh, redo uh, the ENA. The idea is to welcome the uh, brightest talents. And I have a road map which isn't brand new. It's the uh, Declaration of Human Rights and the Citizens, Article 6. State positions are accessible to all without distinction apart from their talent. That was written several centuries ago. Now, in 2016, have we succeeded? It would be a wonderful thing. This school, like all the grandes écoles, should be able to train people for the needs of today and the future. Do we welcome people without distinction, apart from their uh, curriculum and talent? No. Things have uh, deteriorated a little bit, even in the system, in the university system, in the grandes écoles in France, and in Europe, and in the Western world, and uh, all over the world. So maybe one could say, oh, we're no worse than others, or otherwise you, you may end up lying awake at night and wondering why uh, our school system isn't a, a social ladder. It's true that uh, uh, in the school you don't have Mr. and the son or daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Jones, but we don't necessarily have the sons and daughters of the big uh, business leaders. You have a lot of kids uh, uh, whose parents are teachers. I love teachers. Only 30 percent, but 30 percent of uh, 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 the children of uh, school teachers, that's too many. It means the uh, teachers uh, uh, find the ways and means of getting their kids into these elite schools. We want to be sure we're not discriminating. We try and train our jury members. We include in juries people who are professionals in diversity. You've heard some of them this morning. They're welcome to come and help us because we recruit. And uh, you don't want to recruit people who resemble you. You want to recruit people who can contribute something. So we're trying to change things. We're also trying to attract to these uh, 
careers which were impressive and not well known, people who weren't initially programmed for that, for example. We have uh, a special uh, uh, preparatory class uh, with the boarding facilities. These are kids who've been successful in their studies and we help them, we give them a helping hand. We house them, we give them a computer, a scholarship, they work in small groups of 20, they get coaching, tutoring for a whole year, if not two. They're taken all over the place so they can uh, understand uh, what uh, the jobs they're aspiring to look like, so we want them to succeed. And it's a great source of satisfaction. It's a drop of water in the ocean, but you don't start with a drop of water. And then you can't complain that the uh, country is stalling. So what are we supposed to be teaching them? That's where I do an amazing job, because the real answer is I don't know. 60% of jobs in 2030 don't even exist today. That's a study published last year. We don't know what jobs we're training people for today. This is true of the engineering schools, the business schools. All we know is that jobs won't look like they do today. So to transmit, to hand down, fine, but what? The desire to learn, intellectual curiosity, the ability to work in teams. There's a lot of solitary intelligence in this country, but we're not very good at uh, team sports, but you can work on that. No longer be in a place where you just learn the right answers. You want to be in a place where you teach people the right questions and how to ask them, and with whom, not all alone. Living in splendid isolation, you're almost sure that you'll think the same thing as your neighbor and your predecessor. This is an idea which will soon become obsolete. It will only see part of the problem. What I'm trying to do modestly with uh, my teams is to open the school, to open the school and students to the world and to others. To the world, there are a lot of people from elsewhere. <laughs> they uh, uh, explain their successes and their failures. Failures are also important. And we're opening up to schools which are not like Lena. One day I was told uh, something, it's a school 42, it's the country of Lena. I love that. And I called them up immediately and I said, can I come and see you? And they were great. I was able to go around the school. It's even more selective. They're even more demanding. But now we do work together with these other people, and it is producing interesting results. We work with designers. We work with all sorts of people who want together to transmit, reinvent, think afresh when it comes to knowledge. It's not a question of know-how, it's not a toolbox, it's not a recipe. We're talking about values, in fact. The values today, values uh, based in, on citizenhood, these are things that people wonder about, talk about, and often say silly things about, but there's nothing more modern than values. I was fortunate in my previous existence. I was part of a, an ethics committee. We wanted to uh, underscore ethics in the civil service and in political life. And that's what I wanted. I, I was afraid pupils would say to me, oh, that's something that old ladies do. And uh, sometimes I feel I'm about 200 years older when I talk to my students. I say, well, I, I'm going to talk, we're going to talk about ethics, uh, public, uh, civil service, uh, what uh, do we owe to our citizens? We have a wonderful motto, serving without becoming subservient. You shouldn't just say serve and serve yourself. And that's what students were actually eager to hear. People just uh, uh, sat down, they say, oh, uh, we want to think together. What are we uh, aiming at? For whom? We need to do this work on citizenship, the great values, equality, access of all to the civil service, public service, uh, 
Secularism, and just imagine, there isn't just one right answer. You need to keep asking the right questions with the right people. That's very useful. We've been working on values, and it's everything but old-fashioned. In fact, most of the companies you've seen to say, see, you've heard today say that they talk about their culture, values serving the common good, that's one of the values which counts most. Saying it is one thing, but how should you actually do this? Okay, great uh, lectures, fine, but life challenges your values, your practices. Uh, I have uh, outstanding uh, pupils, almost all of them are outstanding, yet I still have to grade them at the end. And I keep saying to them, you're going to become real players in society. That means they have to be in the field all the time. I was pleased to take the floor after Marie and uh, others, Unicity. We've worked with them. We worked on civic service. All the students at LENA have an obligation, which they can do as they like. They have to become, uh, once a week, uh, work uh, in an association, an NGO, do civil service. They can choose for themselves. We don't uh, ha dictate what uh, commitment they should uh, uh, take up. But they, we asked them simply to work with the most vulnerable. And for two years, they helped people who weren't dealt a very good hand in life to assist them, to learn from these people, to give to these people, so that throughout their lives, in what they do with all their responsibilities, they may be in leading positions, so that they will remember this forevermore and understand that, first of all, when you enter these uh, uh, leading schools, it means you have far more duties than rights. And what you learn from those who are less fortunate, what you learn will enable this country to uh, really be the homeland of true citizens. Thank you.